Hello and welcome. I am Chip Griffin, the founder of Saga, the Small Agency Growth Alliance. And today I am very pleased to have with me a longtime friend, a really smart person, and someone who's going to give you some great perspective over the next 30 minutes, Cami Hoiza from Zoetica Media. Welcome, Cami. Hi, Chip. It's so great to see you. It, it is great to see you. It's always fun to to get to watch your live stream. So I'm I'm happy that you're over here now on one of mine. And of course, if you're listening to this in podcast land, it is also going out as a Chats with Chip podcast. So, uh, Kemi, why don't you share a little bit about yourself before we dive into our topic of the day? Sure. Um, so I have been a agency owner, or at least a, a consultant, for over 20 years now. Chip, I started way back in 2002. And I thought it would be really fun to have an, uh, my own business. And I uh, did had no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> like, no idea. It was crazy. And so those first couple of years were nuts, like just trying to figure out how to get people to engage with us and get, engage with me. And I've been a director of communication. So I did a lot of strategic things. But what I found when I came into agency world is people want to hire you for a task. And so it was really stressful to keep trying to find all of those things. So over the years, I've you know put together a system that has helped me to have this agency that's been really great for my family. It's been really great for my community. Um, I've been able to grow it and have you know a pretty good impact, you know, even even worldwide. So it's been really a great um, thing. And I love being here to talk about those experiences and how you two can get those. So um, I love it. I, I would never go back. I'd never be an employee. So well, that's the thing, you know, most of us who are in the agency world mm -hmm. are ultimately we're unemployable because we've spent so long running our own businesses that, yeah. you know, if you if you go back in house somewhere, it's you're going to be chafing and, and you're not going to be happy and probably your boss isn't going to be thrilled with you either. So <laughs> It is what it is. It takes different kinds of personalities. And I, I think, you know, some of what you said there, you know, resonates with my own story. You know, in my case, when I started my first agency in the late 90s, it was uh, because I didn't want to call myself unemployed. I had left yeah. a job in D.C. I was moving to New Hampshire. And of course, back then you couldn't just say, hey, I'm going to do my job remotely because that <laughs> really wasn't a, a thing back in the 1990s, True. at least on any regular basis. And so uh, I called myself a consultant, managed to get my first client before I packed the U-Haul up. And uh, so the rest, as they say, is history. But like you, I didn't really know what I was doing. And so I was feeling my way through it. And, mm -hmm. you know, so one of the things that I love now is, as I think, uh, you know, one of the mm -hmm. things you enjoy too, is that you can share your experience with other people so that they don't have to necessarily take as long a road to learn some of the things that you and I did back in the day. No, I totally agree with you. And uh, by the way, I came from DC too. So that was where I was at. And I went to San Antonio, Texas. So it's one of those things where you go somewhere where you know no one and you're like, hey, why don't I start a business? Uh, crazy. Um, but one of the things that did happen, it was 2002. So a little bit later, um, my my employer, I was doing a, a, a magazine, like I was an editor of a magazine. So they let me keep that as my, so they were my first client. My old employer became my first client. And that was interesting. It was all FedEx packages and that kind of thing and faxes and so forth, but it worked great. And um, I really, I mean, I've been working remotely, so to speak, ever since then. And I love it. I mean, so when we came to remote time this past couple of years, I'm like, okay, Let's go. What do you need to know? I've been doing this right. for like decades. So um, it was great. And and my uh, whole team, by the way, I will tell you, there's um, seven of us and um, we all are remote. So I've never had a, a location. They all work from home and they all are in Texas. And we could all talk about that at some point because you have a lot of tax things that go on if you hire people out of state. Yep. Um, but um, they all are here in Texas, except for the ones that are contractors. There's a few that are, um, my admin works for another company. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I think that's, um, you know, it's something I've talked about on some of my mm -hmm. other shows as well, yeah. the importance of understanding where your employees work, particularly in mm -hmm. this, this new remote forward world, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, because I think most small agency owners don't understand what the implications are. And, and so they're not thinking about those as they're putting together policies and strategies and all that kind of stuff. So it's certainly important. And I think right now it's really important to know because I know a lot of um, employees are asking, can I live over here and still work for you? And so you need to think about all of those tax consequences and how you set that up. But 
Um, the big thing but, I and, can... and worse, some employees are just announcing that they are doing that, mm. right? So some of them, don't, some of the employees don't even understand that it's a question that they ought to be asking. They're just saying, "Hey, I'm moving here." Okay, that's nice. <laughs> There's a lot to do. <laughs> There's there a is, lot to do on the back end. Um, yeah. So yeah. So that that being said, um, one of the things that I found out is that um, over the years, what I realized is that if I was out in front, like if I came out and I did uh, live streams, or you know, I was talking to people, or you know, I started social media breakfast in Houston, and that's been running now for 11 years. Yay! Um, so if you if you step out as a agency owner, especially if you're in the creative agency side of things. So you are a um, uh, communicator or you're a marketing person or whatever. Um, and the, here's here's the dirty secret that we rarely uh, promote ourselves. We're really great at promoting right. our customers, our clients. We'll spend hours like, you know, writing them to make sure that they show up and that they do all these things. But then when it comes to our stuff, this is the dirty secret. We'll put our our thing to do that we need to get done on Friday, you know, like put it on your calendar here, I'm going to put it on Friday. And then you'll get to Friday and you'll be like, and you'll move it to the next Friday. <laughs> so right. if you've ever done something like that, I'm with you a hundred percent. And so um, one of the things I really want to do over the next year or so is to help um, a group of small consultants or small agency owners to um, fix that for themselves. And so I'm really, really excited about this idea. Um, it's something that I think has kind of been percolating for a long time for me um, to help people that are just, you know, like looking for some accountability. I mean, generally speaking, we know what we're supposed to do, right? Yep. We know exactly what we're supposed to do, but are we doing it? And um, so I really want to um, work on that this year. That's So that's my focus really for the next probably you know, a year or so. Well, I think that the, the trick is that you have to start treating yourself as a client, which is which is how mm -hmm. we've titled this episode anyway, because yeah. it's, it is so important that if you're going to be promoting your own agency or your own mm -hmm. consultancy, you need to be treating yourself just as you would any other client. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. helps give you the, the structure that helps. It's not going to eliminate your pushing it off to next week because you've got no. a client concern or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it, it puts more pressure on you to treat yourself properly as a business and not allow things to slip and slide and you know fall to the wayside where ultimately you're, it's, it's why so many agencies complain about feast or famine, right? Yeah. You have feast or famine because you're yeah. not out there consistently promoting. And, and one of the first lessons that I learned in my own agency back uh, in the day and that I've told every agency owner I can find for the last 20 years or so is when you are the busiest, that's when you need to focus the most on business development. Because otherwise, then you get those roller coasters, right? Because the, the tendency mm -hmm. is always, I'm so busy. In fact, I just talked to an agency owner in the last week or so. I said, you know, I, I'm so busy. I don't know how we could take on another client. So I'm going to ease off on um, yeah, you know, the, the gap. outreach. I, said, I hear don't that do all the that. time. And that's don't like do it. such a thing. You don't do it. Don't do it because that's exactly when. So um, what will happen is you'll get really, really, really um, dependent on a specific client or number of clients and it'll it'll be like this and you'll be so busy that you you're like I don't I can't I can't even take on another client I think that's what you just said is absolutely 100 true I've heard people say that and I've also heard different ways of dealing with that you know some people will put them on a wait list I think that's good because you can keep going and and then bump over a wait list I think that's great one of the things I've done um, is I have and I started with my administrative assistant okay so that was long long ago and um, what I have, what I've done is I've made it the task of somebody on my team that they are the account manager for our business. So you want to give it to yep. A Someone team has member. to have responsibility, ownership. Because if mm -hmm. you know the other mistake we all make is, well, we all have to contribute. If mm -hmm. everybody's in charge, nobody's in charge. Well, you have to have somebody that I mean, you can make the other ones to contribute, but you have to have a you have to yep. have a like a whip. You know what I'm saying? You have to have somebody yep, who exactly. has time for that. And so you need to put aside a certain amount of hours that either your admin is going to do, or maybe you hire somebody that's going to help you out um, if you're just by yourself. And I know that a lot of people don't want to do that. You're really afraid. And I was too. I remember being super afraid to hire anybody, even an admin. Um, and what I did is I actually um, 
made sure that that admin had some billable hours too to one of our clients. And then when I did that, then her, like much of her, uh, the rest of her um, time was covered. And so I only had to like pitch in just a little bit to make it work. So yep. um, think about things in a very different way, but having a little bit of help will make it easier for you to, you know, meet the needs of your clients at the same time that you um, are also meeting the needs of your business, which is a, think of your business as a person, is a thing, it is a client for you. Yep. Um well, I, I think as the owner, you know, when you're thinking about taking stuff off of your plate, and, and you know, one of the things I preach all the time is that as the owner, your time is the most important thing in the business, and it is what will determine your ultimate success or failure because it's something you can't buy more of your own time, you can't manufacture more of it, you can't hire it. It is what it is. So you have to make sure that you're making the highest, best use of that time. So if you're thinking about hiring a, an administrative assistant or something like that, you have to look not really at the immediate cost, although that matters from a cash flow perspective, mm -hmm. but what you have to look at is the delta, the difference between how much you're paying that individual and how much you can generate for the business in that freed up time. So if you've transferred an hour from your plate to theirs, how are you now spending that hour? And you darn sure better make sure that it's much higher value than the work that you've handed off. Yeah, and I think that that's really important. In fact, I, 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 even this week, I've had a little bit of stress around that. I had a, a writer that moved on. She went on to do some other things. And so all of a sudden this week, I've been doing like client writing and like I've been in the weeds with like the actual client work. Um, about a year or two ago, I've made it my goal to get out of the, the client work like at the higher level. I mean, I'd be there for strategy and that kind of thing, but not doing the actual like day-to-day -day work. Um, so I managed to get there. And once in a while, you know, somebody will quit, somebody will move on, something will happen, and you're going to have to get in there. And if you have systems in place to quickly manage that, it's much faster. So like I have, you know, Gusto, for example, which is my HR tool. Um, it makes it super, super, super easy for me to hire someone. Like super easy, like dead simple, whether it's a contractor or a, um, or a, like a W2 employee. And so those kinds of things, um, until I had those in place, those were speed bumps for me. You know, like I'd be, I, it, they seem like mountains, like, Oh, I have to hire someone. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to fill out this paperwork. I'm gonna have to do this. Just the thought of like the, the amount of stuff you'd have to do was too much. So like having those systems in place will really help you. Um, so that's something that I've learned too along the way, because I really was stuck on these things too, really. I mean, I know that's what you do, Chip, so I'm really excited about, uh, that's why I love watching your show. I learn a lot. Well, great. So um, let's let's talk a little bit about um, how we operationalize this idea of treating mm -hmm. yourself as a client. Yes. And so, you know, the first thing that you've identified, I think, is that you have to put somebody in charge. Somebody has to have yes. ownership of it. But I mean, let's go beyond that. I mean, do you... Do you advise that you you treat it literally like any other client of your agency, or is it really sort of is that really more of a uh, a concept, and then you you figure out which tools and levers are different for? I mean, I suppose it depends on the kind of agency you are, right? I mean, if you're right. if your business is promoting other consultancies, well, then that's easy, right? Because you you can just mimic the process exactly, but. So, so talk through a little bit about how you would mm -hmm. operationalize that for a business. Sure. So um, the way we do with our clients, I have like a, a, I have a standard operating procedure when we bring the client on. So what we do specifically is we run social media accounts for our, our clients. And we generally work with corporate clients and a, like kind of, you know, mid-sized and above really. Um, so we have like big, big, huge clients, like a hospital system with seven hospitals and all that. And we do like best, basically community management on social media for them. Um, and I also, we have some clients that are just larger sized businesses that are like more regional, right? So we work with some a re renovating group and we work with women's business centers and stuff like that. Anyway, so the point is, is that when we sit down with them, we have a plan for exactly how we're going to bring them on board. And one of the things I used to do that honestly was a mistake is that I thought of everything as being um, custom. You know what I'm saying? So like when somebody came in, we're going to like find out what your problems are and we're going to custom solve them. And I, you know, whatever those- Which is a path to ruin for any agency or consultancy. It's disastrous. A, you, you just are too busy to even think. B, you have too many products floating around. You have to figure out how to get them done. Oh, you know, can you do SEO? Sure, I can do SEO. I know a lot about it. 
it's just, it's, a, it's insane. Right. You generate bad <laughs> results for your clients and bad results for your own business because you're not efficient. Yeah. So you're yeah. not effective or efficient. That means you're not profitable. Bad for your reputation. It's just bad, 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 bad. Preaching to the choir here, I can see. <laughs> so um, what ended up happening was, is that I thought, you know, I thought that was really cool that I was like, that that was my claim to fame, that I could custom, you know, create anything for you. And what I realized is you just don't get cr traction anywhere. Right. And so we've really narrowed down our product suite. Like, again, we're community managers for brands. That's what we do. Um, we all, we do that. And we, um, part of that is email marketing and just anything that has to do with connecting with the client one-to-one, -one, you know what I mean? Either through social media or right through the email track. So those are the two kind of things we do. And, and also fa the Facebook advertising part of it, but ah, as I'm ringing, um, the Facebook advertising part of it, which is, um, not like, you know, the, it's really about boosting the content. So it's all around the content. So we are very focused on content. Mm -hmm. that so, part. you know, I think one of the problems that a lot of communicators have mm -hmm. in their own businesses is, is, you know, it's the cobbler's kids problem, which we, <laughs> yes, we, we were so sort of true. addressing before. But mm -hmm. so as a result, you know, when we're talking about treating yourself as a client, should you also be thinking about hiring an agency or a consultant mm -hmm. or someone who yes. is external to you to help accelerate that process and make sure that it's getting the attention that it deserves if you rather need to. than using your own resources. If you need to, yes. And I do think that some people do. So I think that it's good to have that. I mean, even I know how to run Facebook ads, but when I was running my online course last year, um, I came, I was coming up to the launch and I was like, this is insane. Like for me to try to run the ads. And so I just called up my friend um, Todd and said, I need you to run these ads for me. So I hired him as an agency and he was, he ran my ads. Um, mm -hmm. can I run the ads? Yes. I absolutely hundred percent know how to run ads. Should I be doing that at that moment? No, I should not because I need to be out there connecting with the people that are coming into the program. That's the difference. And so one of the things I did last year is I did add a, um, a, a new product, which was a product line, which is training. And along that training side, because people kept hiring me to train their teams and their staff and their, they just kept hiring me to train. And I, I just saw that I was like, okay, this is a really good thing. So I've got our um, agency side and now we've got smart social secret side. So I, I was feeling like that was helping me with another problem I had, which was, I was very top heavy with a particular client. So I wanted to make sure that we had like another revenue stream, but I didn't want to go like, Oh, now we do this and this and this and this and this. You know, I want to make right. sure it's very specific, very clear um, what that new revenue stream is going to be. And it's really all around training. And so that really was, um, you know, something you have to think about. And inside of that, I have hired outside people to come do the things that my that I that people know how to do. In addition, I have also gone to my team and I've made pe certain people responsible four things in that. So like Tracy is our community manager for smart social secrets, for example, that's what she does. She mm -hmm. is absolutely hundred percent in. She also works on another client account, but this is one of her clients. So basically like for any other client, you have to figure out, you know, what the resources are that you need to get the mm -hmm. job done. If they're internal, great. If they're external for bandwidth or expertise reasons, you shouldn't be afraid to go there to, to help promote your own agency. Correct. And that's really important because you, and, and even if you lose a little money in the beginning, you're going to gain a huge amount of traction and that's going to give you the momentum that you need to go forward. And so one of the things I have to do is to be present. Present is really important. Like if you disappear off the internet and you're not coming out every week and doing your show, pretty soon people will be like, oh, I remember Chip. Like, but they aren't going to think of you at first, you know? So like if right now, if I, if I run into somebody who's saying, I'm an agency, I really need some help, like really thinking through my whole process, what do I do? I say, oh, I have this friendship. You should talk to him and I will send them to you. Um, there's a referral thing that happens if, if you're at the top of mind, if people are right. thinking of you and you're at the top of mind. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to get there. So you have to think about where you want to be. So where's your client hanging out? Like what trade shows, what places, whatever. And then you need to be present and visible in all of those places. So in order for you to do that, somebody else in your team has got to do the work. Right. Well, and, and a lot of that starts with 
you can't know where they are until you know who they are. And so mm -hmm. I, I think a huge piece of this that a lot of mm -hmm. agencies miss out on is really clearly defining who their ideal client is and not with something just generic like, you know, I work oh, with healthcare yeah. firms or what. Well, yeah. no, let's be more specific. What kind of healthcare? Who are they serving? What are they delivering? What's their size? What's their employee structure for communications or marketing or whatever you're selling? Right. You, you really need to be very granular because that's how you figure out where those people live and meet them there rather than forcing them to come to you. And sometimes it can be different too, because I was telling you before we got on here, I, I really struggled with this for years. Like, who am I really serving? Like, because I have like a hospital system and I've got, you know, um, you know, nonprofit and I've got <laughs> a, a for-profit business, anyway, a service provider. So mm -hmm. in the end of the day, um, what I realized is that who I serve best are other communicators. So I serve best the director or the vice president or whatever of communications for a company. That's who I serve best because we talk the same language. We have the same, we go to the same conferences. We like have the same everything. And even for small business owners that I do work with through, so, uh, through social media breakfast in Houston and so on, a lot of those, most of those are, um, communicators, you know, mm -hmm. they're like small business communicators. They they have communications businesses or they're small agencies or um, they could own their own company, but they have like sort of an understanding of communications and background. Mm -hmm. So it sure. doesn't yeah. have to be like hospitals that are in like this niche. It can also be a type of person. Oh, exactly. Yes. It, and that's, and I think that the reason why people get scared off when you, when you tell them that they need to, to niche their business or something like that, it's because they think that it's, it's just going to be sort of a, a monochromatic client base and it, yeah. it's all limited to a particular industry because, you, but that's just so untrue because you can niche in many different ways. It can be by geography, mm -hmm. it can be by problem, it can be by industry. It, I mean, this, it can be by, are you a public or private company? And there you don't have to so stick many with different it forever. Things. P.S. Correct. Correct. Yes. It, and, and because the market will tell you at various points that you probably need to make some adjustments and and you need to listen to the market. Yes. You, you can't just go out there and blindly say, well, this is how I'm going to do things. It's, it's sort of like, you know, back when I was advising businesses and they would say, well, you know, I want to call this process X and such. I'm like, well, but nobody else calls it that. So they're never going to find you through search. You're mm -hmm. going to have to explain it to them when you meet with them why don't you just use the existing terminology <laughs> instead of trying to invent your own? And then you can teach right? them the other terminology once they're in. So That's your marketing yeah, exactly. But don't, totally don't use it as your entry point, right? You know, no. if you're IBM or Apple or something like that, okay, mm -hmm. maybe you can, you know, create your own terminology no, and force you can't. people into it. Right? I actually have an example of how you can't do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so back a couple of years ago, um, Microsoft was holding a women's conference here in Houston. And they were going to teach them growth hacking and some other things like that. But they wanted to teach growth ha hacking to like small business people that had never heard that term right. ever, like <laughs> ever. Like, I mean, it was still new back then. Like I, I, most people hadn't heard. I, about I think it even yet. today, most small business people wouldn't. Right. Really they would understand that. that. <laughs> and so um, they were going to teach them a bunch of really cool things, which I thought were going to be great, but their whole um, page was like set up with this really kind of internal Microsoft-y kind of terminology. I don't know what else to say besides that. Um, really technical. And they were having a hard time filling up the conference. I think people went, went to the page and thought, this isn't for me. It's like, not for me. So a lot of the, the niching is happening in the marketing side. Of things so the the niching is really about the marketing and the big idea that you have for your specific marketing uh for uh, for anything and so um i went out to my they came to me and said can you invite people from social media breakfast or whatever like we want this done so i sent that out to my um group and i said it was for women and i said hey you know um, we're doing this thing and um and my, microsoft wants to um, have women come and they want to teach you the cutting edge of what's going on right now and of course, that was a that was a big draw. They're like, "Oh, what's going on right now?" And then, um, and I said, "And afterwards, I'm going to do a couple of master classes to make sure that whatever we learn there, you can take it on and apply it to your business." And they were like, "Oh!" And so we put them all into a Facebook group. And then I just put up one post at the very beginning of it and said, "What is the one thing that you want to get out of the Microsoft conference experience?" And so they started to tell me what they wanted to, what they were thinking. And so I took those things and I turned them into Facebook ads. I said, come and learn about this, 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 and this. 
and I did different photos and so on. I had this really, this really cool one with this woman with a bunch of sticky notes all over her. Like, are you overwhelmed with like technology? Let's teach right. you how to like make it better. And so we had this whole thing and they, they talked about the tsunami of technology. That was what it was. And so we used that, but she said, i have the tsunami of technology. I just want to get on top of it. And then I had this girl with the sticky notes anyway um all out of all of those six ads you know like two of them got like the best results and so we we kind of narrowed in on those two ads and then it filled the entire conference up so that was cool because you know and then i and then of course i with my folks i was able to like work with them a little bit longer as well which was really cool too mm -hmm. but um you know, you really have to think about what people want right now in order to draw them in. And then when they get in, you can teach them all the things. So like I said, when a new client comes in, we work on um, their exactly what you just said. We're going to talk about who they're trying to reach. We're going to talk about who they're trying to help, what the problems they solve are, um, what the objections are to their service. And then we're going to um, put together a strategy around that. And then we do the social media around the strategy instead of just like, oh, we're going to put up a post on like Valentine's Day and we're going to put up a post on this. We don't, that's not what we do. We yeah. are like, we go into deep into the customer and who the customer is. And so why wouldn't I do that for my own business? Right. So as you're, as you're thinking about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the small agency world, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the next year or two, should agencies be well, what should they be doing as far as uh, things to promote themselves? Should they be doing video, for example? Mm -hmm. Should they be doing podcasts? Should yeah. they be, you know, writing articles, speaking? What are, are there certain levers, or is it really dependent upon the individual? I, I mean, I mean, obviously, video is big right now. But um, one of the things, that, and so is, and really, audio is something really good too. But the, so, in, so the thing, you need you to do the thing more? that you're going to do. Right. That's so what you I, need to do. I, I know you do a lot of video. I do a lot of video. Mm -hmm. Explain for listeners who may not be doing video yet why video is so powerful mm -hmm. in promoting your communications or agency business. Well, first of all, you're going to be terrible at it when you start. <laughs> Let's just be honest. I mean, you're going to be terrible at it. You're going to hate it. You're going to be like, oh, I don't know. It's like going back to your, you know, junior high or elementary school. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so, this is like, wow. Um, so that's what it's going to be like. If you go back to like early videos, you're going to be like, oh, that's terrible. But it, it really the, it's in the practice, right? Getting out there and doing it over and over again. And like, you know, getting things to look better and get your, getting your set in order and doing all that stuff, but you don't have to do it perfect first. So I just want to say that the main thing is just to show up and start working with people and talking to them. The big thing is to talk to one person when you're on video. The big thing is to talk to a person, like say, hey, you guys, no. Hey, I'm, an, I'm talking to you. And you should know right now, if you're listening, that I am talking to you, right? So if, if, if you feel like I'm talking to you right now, I don't even know how many people are on this today. But if you feel like I'm talking to you right now, leave me a comment. Say, hey, Cammie, um, you know, I, I can tell that you're talking to me because I am. I'm talking directly to you. And it makes a big difference, I think, in how people are perceiving you on video. So it's very, the power is in the intimacy. The power is in the connection. That is the power of video. Um, that is also the power of audio, by the way. You know, you, you'll go to bed with somebody in your ear listening to your favorite podcast. Um, you know, then, you know, then I've gone to, I've, I've hung out with you um, in all the situations that I don't even want to think about. Um, but the idea is that you, cause I had, a, you now, know, now you're just making it sound creepy, Cammie. I, I, I don't know. All right. I'm creepy. A little bit we're, creepy. We're, we're but, selling them on this, right? We, we, cause we believe in the power of audio and video. But it is, it is, it, it is something that gets you uh, yeah. the, the trust of people, that people that listen to you. So well, you and, have and to I think that's that the key though. because if, if a client's mm -hmm. going to come to you and pay for your advice yeah. and your expertise, they want to feel like they know you. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that from 15 years of doing podcasts and years of mm -hmm. doing video, anyone who has seen or heard me when they first come to me, it's a dramatically shorter sales cycle mm -hmm. because they've already, even though I haven't spoken to them officially directly, mm -hmm. they feel like I have been. And so it, it allows them to get a feel for how you are and how you work that I think agencies can really benefit from. Right. And you're, you're like, you know, doubling down on this. So you do video and it turns it into a podcast and you do that. I, I use a tool that does something similar. And so um, that I think is really, really cool because right now 
because of the way things have progressed. I mean, when we started out, Chip, it would have been very hard for us to have this kind of opportunity oh, for sure. to be able to just jump in and like be on multiple platforms at once and and be able to turn it into a even, even two or three years ago this was not mm -hmm. very easy i mean the, there's been mm -hmm. you know huge progress in technology mm -hmm. over the last year and a half it's one of the the good things that has come out of the pandemic but the other thing you can do is even if you're not super comfortable i mean you want to be comfortable on video and i i i just say you need to be out there once per week i mean that's really what you need once per week where you're out there, where people will see you, uh, because people will only catch you like once a month anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's they're not going to be able to if that, find you. if that, if right? that, if uh, that. I mean, but every I mean, time, they're okay. like, oh, I see all your videos go by. I cannot tell you how many of my clients, Chip, when I when I kind of ramped up the every week video, just kind of came out of the woodworks. Like former clients that are like, oh, I want you to do this, or I I had this idea. Oh, why don't you come do that? And so it had unintended consequences that were good. You know, that were like, you, it just brings you to the top of mind. So when people have a project, yeah. they think yep. of you. That's yeah. all and you that's want. What, that's what you said 15 or 20 minutes ago. That, and it's it's so important that people understand this. When you're selling the, the services that an agency mm -hmm. sells, it's all about right place, right time, and making mm -hmm. sure that you're doing what you can to be on the radar of someone who, mm -hmm. at the point in time when they decide they need help, they're thinking of you. Yeah, it's so important because that's really it. I mean, the sales cycles are long when it comes to video or when it comes to agencies. And here's the thing. Um, there's a lot of research out there right now that are showing that more and more people are leaving their jobs and starting their own businesses. Like it's a thing, right? It's like, I don't know, somewhere I saw like more than 50% of like working population will eventually quit their job and start a business, which I think is crazy. Like that's amazing. But here's the thing you have more competition than you'll ever have. There are people that are coming into this marketplace that are hungry for um, this. And so you will have a lot of competitive forces that are, are coming up. So you have to get out there. You have to get out there and get some, some um, you know, light of day. So be on other people's podcasts, you know, apply to um, speak at a conference, do what you need to do to get your expertise in front of people, not to sell them, but to share everything that you have. And don't be worried that you're sharing too much and blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. People will try to do it themselves, but they always are like, what should I be doing next? And is this the right thing I should be doing? And then they'll be like, oh, I'm just going to hire you. Right. So it, and, it happens. And, and every All time that. you create a video, you appear on a podcast, you give mm -hmm. a talk somewhere, yeah. you're refining your own messaging. And so oh. it means that when you're then sitting in front of a prospect, you've got much more practice at it. And so you you continue to improve and get better at communicating your core value as an agency. So I, there's just, there's so much value to, to creating mm -hmm. content of all different kinds, but I particularly think uh, audio and video. Yeah, and I totally agree. And the other thing that's really cool is that once you have a, a, a work, you know, a body of work, make sure you keep track of it, like in a, in a spreadsheet somewhere, because people will ask you a question and you'll have already answered that question Sometimes right. like here today. So if I'm talking to you, I might send somebody this link and say, oh, you have to listen exactly. to this because we went through this in depth. So um, we were talking about why you need to do this and why I think you need to do this. So, you know, I, I can send this out to my email list. It just gives you so much to be able to work with if you've done this. And it used to be you had to get on television or radio station to do this. And nowadays you don't. Um, right. You don't have to. I mean, I, it's still good if you do. Um, we definitely, I, I just was on a radio station last week talking about it's been 15 years since the birth of the social media manager. Did you know that, Chip? I did not know that. So now this is a career field for 15 years. And they called me up to talk about it because I've been one for 15. Oh my gosh, it's kind of scary, but I've been one the whole time. And so I was talking to my kids and that's what I, that's what they put on the radio. I was talking um, to my kids about their career fields and I said, don't sweat it too much because the thing that I ended right. up being didn't even exist when I was in high school, like didn't even exist. Right. When, when I was in college, I was a political science major. So and, yeah, and, and poli -science. for the first five years of my career, career, I worked in politics. So it, it, it is what it is, but yeah. Um, well, Cami, we could go on and on forever, but sadly, we're out of time for today's show. So we'll we'll have to have you back in the future because I know that we've got lots more to tap into here. But in yeah. the meantime, if someone wants to learn more about you, where should they go? 
Yeah, definitely. I'm Cami Chat, K A M I C H A T, on all social media platforms. Um, you can check out what I'm doing with Smart Social Secrets at smartsocialsecrets.com. And then, my, of course, my agency um, is Zoetica, Z O E T I C A, media.com. Oh, look at you. You brought it right up. And I don't have like one of these little gerbils like um, Jenny has. So I feel really like kind of boring compared to your normal people. You know, sometimes boring is okay, though. I, I don't I don't think we need necessarily Jenny's <laughs> hamster or whatever props Lee McKnight brings on the, the Friday show. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he had some Star Wars things the other day. How about my whatever. Yeti tea? It's, you know, just, just bringing information, I think. That's yeah. really the power of this medium here. We don't need to have gimmicks. All right. Good. Well, um, I, I think it's good. So the, the key is, so if I have to finish it up, be visible, get out there, you know, do either audio or visual. And there's lots of opportunities for doing either one right now. Um, so many, so many places you can do it. If you don't know where, you know, send me a, a DM on wherever you are at for, and I will talk you through it. But be out there and be present and be connecting with people. And I promise you, you're going to get to the top of the mind of people and they're going to remember you when it's time to hire someone. And that is what you want. You want to be getting those referrals all the time. That sums it up beautifully. And if you'd like to learn more about Saga, you can go to smallagencygrowth.com. If you want to see a replay of this or any of the other videos that we have, go to smallagency.tv. And finally, I'd invite you to join the free forum for small agency owners at thesagacommunity.com. So with that, that will wrap up the show today. I'm Chip Griffin. My guest has been Cami Hoysa. It has been great to have you here, Cami, and it's been great having everybody listen. So until next time, I'm Chip Griffin. <laughs>